Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Welcome back. Welcome to Advanced Class 25. Aquí estamos. We're, we're in Class 25 already. Amazing, isn't it? 25 classes. And starting with, again, a little review. We've been talking about the conditionals lately, the second conditional now. And yesterday we were talking about negative. Well, we were practicing with some negative answers. Okay, so would you? So give me a negative answer. Would you study French if you were tired? No, I wouldn't study French if I were tired. Now, remember, we always use if I were. We don't say if I was. Okay, this is a rule for the conditional, for the second conditional. I wouldn't study French if I were tired. I would go to bed if I were tired. Okay. Would you call her if you could? Yes, I would call her if I could. Would you go bowling if you had time? Jugar a los bolos. Would you go bowling if you had time? Ye yes, I would go bowling if I had time. Would you be a good basketball... Oh, sorry, in the negative, I should say. Would you go bowling if you had time? No, I wouldn't go bowling. In the negative, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Wouldn't go bowling if I had time. Would I be a good basketball player if I were one meter, 55 centimeters? Would I be a good basketball pa player? No, no. I wouldn't be a good basketball player if I were one meter, 55 centimeters. Would it be yours if you could sell it? Would it be yours? No, it wouldn't be mine if I could sell it. Or if they sold it. Would it be mine? No, it wouldn't, because I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. Would you build one if they asked you to? No, I wouldn't build one if they asked me to. Could you run 100 meters in 8 seconds if you had a good pair of shoes? Could you run 100 meters in 8 seconds if you had a good pair of shoes? A really good pair of shoes? No. No, I couldn't. I couldn't run eight, no, 100 meters in 8 seconds if I had a really good pair of shoes. Because it's not the shoes. It's the athlete. right? It's not the shoes that makes me run fast. It's, it's my physical condition. I'm not a good runner. I'm just not a fast runner. Well, I'm a fairly fast runner, but I can't run 100 meters in 8 seconds. And I couldn't run 100 meters in 8 seconds even if I had the best shoes in the world. Hmm. Would you go out if it were raining? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So copy my pronunciation, wouldn't, wouldn't. Notice how my pronunciation is with would, like the sound of the, of huevo. W, w, would, would, would. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. Would you? Yes, I would. Would you? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Would you win if you played poorly? No, I wouldn't win if I played poorly. Could I buy a Rolls Royce if I wanted to? No, you couldn't buy a Rolls Royce if you wanted to because they're too expensive. Would you play golf if you had the time? No, I wouldn't play golf if I had the time because I don't like golf. But I do. I do. I would. If I had time this afternoon, I would play golf. Mm-hmm. Would you watch a golf tournament if there were one on TV? Would you watch a golf tournament if there were one on TV? No, I wouldn't watch a golf tournament if there were one on TV. I love playing golf, but not so much watching golf. Would they come if you didn't pay them? No, they wouldn't come if we didn't pay them. Could you buy a Porsche? If you had $100 in your bank account, could you? So give me the answer. No, I couldn't. I couldn't buy a Porsche if I had $100 in my bank account. All right. Now we're going to practice, again, the second conditional, now with the verb to be, using, remember, were, not was. If you were rich, would you? 
stop working? Yes. If I were rich, I would stop working. If I were Chinese, would I be hosting this show? If I were Chinese? No, Kyle. If you were Chinese, you wouldn't be hosting this show. Unless I spoke perfect English. If you were tired, would you sleep? Yes. If I were tired, I would sleep. If Raul were younger, would Real Madrid be better? If Raul were younger, would Real Madrid be better? Yes. If Raul were younger, Real Madrid would be better. If you were German, would you speak German? Yes. If I were German, I would speak German. Yes. If I were German, I would speak German. If you were tall, would you play basketball? Yes. If I were tall, I would play basketball. If I were Spanish, would I speak better Spanish? Yes. Yes. If I were Spanish, I would speak better Spanish. If I were speaking only Spanish, would you be listening? No, Kyle. If you were speaking only Spanish, I wouldn't be listening. If I spoke French, would you be learning English? So give me the answer out loud. And both out No. If you spoke French, I wouldn't be learning English. That's right. If, you, if, if I spoke French, you wouldn't be learning English. So more in the negative. If I weren't talking, would you be listening to the show? If I weren't talking, would you be listening to the show? If it just sounded like, psh, just, just dead air, nothing exciting. If I weren't talking, would you be listening? No, I wouldn't be listening. If Obama weren't a good speaker, would he be the president of the United States? Notice how I say the United States. If Obama weren't a good speaker, would he be the president of the United States? No, he wouldn't. If Obama weren't the president, he wouldn't be... Oh, sorry, if Obama weren't a good speaker, he wouldn't be the president of the United States. If Alonso weren't a good driver, would he be famous? No. If Alonso weren't a good driver, he wouldn't be famous. If Springsteen weren't a good songwriter, would he be so popular? No. If Springsteen weren't a good songwriter, he wouldn't be. So remember I'm saying were, were, not was, always were. If I weren't a native English speaker, would I be hosting this show? No. If you weren't a native English speaker, you wouldn't be hosting this show. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> expression of the day. Time now for our expression of the day. That's right, the expression of the day. The expression of the day is to have a bone to pick. A bone, un hueso, a bone to pick. P-I-C-K. To have a bone to pick. Now, to have a bone to pick, we say... We, we typically say to have a bone to pick with someone. I have a bone to pick with you. It means I have an un unsolved problem that I would like to settle with you. I have a problem with you or with something that you have done, and I would like to solve it. I have a bone to pick. I have a bone to pick with you. You stole my sandwich. I want to get revenge. I have a bone to pick with you. Okay, to have a bone to pick with someone. To have a bone to pick with someone. I had a bone to pick with my brother one time. When I was young, I had a bone to pick with him because he, he, kept, um, he, kept, he kept taking some of my things, some of my toys. When I was very young, he would take my toys and, and they would disappear. And I, I got angry. And I may have said... When I was that young, I probably didn't say it, but I could have said, hey, I have a bone to pick with you. I have a problem that I want to settle with you, an, an unsolved dispute that I would like to resolve. I don't think those were the words I used when I was six years old, but I could have. 
to have a bone to pick. Now, do you have a bone to pick with some of your colleagues at work? Oh, he's always, he's always taking the last cup of coffee. I have a bone to pick with him. Hmm. Okay, to have a bone to pick, that is our expression of the day. Now, we will move on and take a quick look at, well, more examples with the conditional. Now, I've been asking so many questions. Now it's time for you to ask me the questions. So ask me, ask me if I would speak better Spanish if I were, if I were Spanish. Kyle, would you speak better Spanish if you were Spanish? Yes, I would. I would speak better Spanish if I were Spanish. Ask me if I would if I would buy a car if I had more money. Kyle, would you buy a car if you had more money? No, I wouldn't buy a car if I had more money. Because parking is very frustrating in Madrid, and I, I have no desire to get a car at the moment. Hmm. Ask me if my parents would visit me more often if they had more free time. Kyle, would your parents visit you more often if they had more free time? No, I don't think so. I don't think they would visit me more often. I think they visit me, they visit me often enough, and uh, they're busy doing their own things, and I'm fine with that. Ask me if my brother would live with me if he, if he had no job. Would your brother live with you if he had no job or if he didn't have a job? Yes, my brother would probably live with me if he didn't have a job. Maybe he would maybe he would leave wherever he well, he would leave his his hometown. Well, he would not his hometown, but he would leave where he lives and he would come to live with me if he didn't have a job. But he has a job. He's busy. Mm. Vocabulary of the day. All right, it's time now for the vocabulary of the day. The vocabulary, our five words of vocabulary. The first word today, well, it's two words, in fact, bien tratado. Well treated. Well treated. Are you well treated in your family? Do your relatives treat you well? Are you well treated at work? I hope so. I'm well treated in my company. I'm glad that I have a job where I am well treated. Yes, it's good to be well treated. Treated well because I'm well treated. To be well treated. Mm. Notice we don't say good treated. What's the difference between good and well? Good. Remember that good, good is an adjective. And well is an adverb. Good describes things. Well describes actions. So treated, how, how am I treated? The verb to treat. To, tratado, to, be, to be treated. I am treated well, so I am well treated. Remember, to, to remember the difference between good and well, think of this. Think of your favorite football player. Let's say uh, uh, David Beckham. I like Beckham because his name ends with an M and I get to pronounce it Beckham. Not Beckham, but Beckham. Beckham is a good player because he plays well. He's a good player. Good describing the player, the noun, because he plays well. Well describing the action, describing the verb. Number two, curriculum vitae. CV. CV, we say in English. We just say CV. We don't say curriculum be that. We just say CV. CV. May I see your CV? We also have resume, which is a word we borrowed from, we have borrowed from French. Gigante. Gigante. Giant. 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 Yes. He's a giant. En medio. Quítate del medio. De, de en medio. Estás en medio. In the way. To be in the way. Don't confuse this with on the way. Estoy en camino. I'm on the way. Estás en medio. You're in the way. Move. You're in the way. You're blocking the door. I'm trying to get through the door and you're in the way. 
in the way, en medio, on the way, en camino. Okay, very different. Make sure you understand the difference there. In the way, en medio, on the way, en camino. Dominio, dominio. Mastery, mastery. We have the verb to master, and then the noun mastery, mastery. So keep studying if you want to achieve mastery of the language. Okay. In spite of the fact that we only have two and a half minutes, I would like to discuss this new grammar point. Despite having only two and a half minutes, we can still discuss it. Despite the fact that we only have two and two and two minutes and fifteen seconds, I will discuss it. Okay. So basically, in spite of the fact that, and despite the fact that, are essentially the same. In spite of and despite are essentially the same. But just remember, in 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 spite of, or despite, plus noun. In spite of the weather. We went to a pesar de. We went to the park. In spite of the weather, we went to the park. In spite of the weather. Despite the weather, we went to the park. It's the same. They mean the same thing. Now, in spite of the fact that, the fact that, or despite the fact that, those two are the same. And those two, we follow by subject and verb. In spite of the fact that it, subject, verb, it was raining, we went to the park. Despite the fact that it was raining, we went to the park. I'm going to the beach despite the crowds. So we had an example in the student guide. There are a lot of people, but you want to go to the beach anyway. I'm going to the beach despite the crowds. I'm going to the beach despite the fact that there are a lot of people. I'm going to the beach in spite of the crowds. I'm going to the beach in spite of the fact that there are a lot of people. Okay? I'm going to keep talking for... I'm, I'm going to keep talking despite the fact that there's only one minute left. I'm going to keep talking in spite of the fact that there's only one minute left. I'm going to keep talking despite the time. I'm going to keep talking despite the time. I'm going to end the show because we are absolutely, completely out of time. So thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again soon. My name is Kyle. Keep listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>